Good afternoon, everybody. All right, it's 1.30, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll try to try to jazz up the room post-lunch, worst time slot. Let's go. Um, so I'm Nick Chaviano. I'm the Director of Data Services, and um, alongside me is uh, Andrew Dietz. Hey, guys, uh, I'm Andrew Dietz. I'm the uh, uh, Director of Platforms and Databases. Uh, we're going to give you guys a little uh, uh, introduction to what we're doing with uh, uh, modernizing our, our technology stack and the ADI. Um, and one thing I want to note too is, you know, let's make this interactive. So I don't want to be stiff and just uh, talking to everybody about this stuff. So as questions arise, let's make it interactive. Feel free to raise your hand, except for Oksana. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, please, uh, please ask questions as we go through. Um, there's not that many slides, but a lot of content. Um, so um, I want to try to get get going here. And uh, again, yeah, let's make this interactive. So just to go over the agenda a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the technology landscape here, at least as it relates to what we're doing within data services. Uh, we'll go through the transitioning of technology. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing now, or I guess really what we've done in the past, what we're doing now and transitioning to, and where we see us going in the future. We'll look at our data services reference model, which Andrew will talk about in detail. We'll talk through uh, some of the case examples, uh, case study examples of the work that we've done, and then uh, we'll end with conclusion and future plans. And then, if there's time, question and answers. But again, please feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, so first, wh what is data services? So there's a lot of text on here, but I've highlighted the parts that um, I think are important as to what we do uh, within OIT and what we're trying to strive for uh, to serve the institute at large. So you know, we serve as trusted advisors. We empower our stakeholders. We tr we see ourselves as technical leaders. We're trying to drive efficiency, and we, you know, something that's core is embodying a true partnership approach. So uh, we we work with customers and stakeholders across campus, and we're trying to solve complex problems, um, whether they're small in scale, localized to an, uh, you know a particular unit, or that they could be enterprise in scope, like transitioning an ERP. So let's look a little bit, uh, you know, what comprises data services? Um, and one thing I want to note too is while I am the director of data services, my role and responsibility is around kind of three core elements, which is data warehousing, enterprise integrations, and enterprise reporting. Um, you know, Andrew, what he does is centered around platforms and databases, but to the campus at large, what we're trying to tell people is data services encompasses all of these things. So while, um, you know, the reporting structures look a little different for what is, you know, the difference between data services or um, enterprise enterprise platforms and databases, um, you know, outwardly what we're, uh, you know, when we speak to campus, we think of data services as comprising all of these things. So first is enterprise data warehousing. And so this is looking at identification of business processes. So, um, you know, uh, what, what is going on to conduct business here at the Institute? We do source to target mapping, meaning we look at what um, our key sources of information are, whether that's an ERP like Workday or um, one USG Connect for HR or um, Banner for student. And we bring over information from those systems and um, house it in one central location. And so um, what source to target means to us is we've mapped business processes that are key to the Institute in order to facilitate reporting, whether that's localized or for um, like mandated federal reporting. And so um, we have documentation that maps every one of these processes. So when you think about like, you know, how many students are here at Georgia Tech, um, we've mapped every system um, and uh, to be able to log that process so that we can report it out globally. Um, we also stage tables from our source systems. And what I mean by stage um, is we take data directly from our core ERPs or myriad of systems across campus, and we bring them in like for like into the data warehouse. Um, from there, then we can do additional modeling on top um, to, to help with reporting, integrations, et cetera. Um, lastly is the modeling of facts and dimensions. So um, this is um, taking raw data or stage tables and then manipulating them in such a way um, that follows a business process into a fact, which is um, a table that maps a business process, which is typically numerical like keys um, and dimensions, which is what is known as the soul of the data warehouse because it, um, it you know, it, it contains all of the, the, the information uh, in a readable format. Um, so that's that's what um, enterprise data warehousing is and what it means to us. Next is enterprise integrations, which is key. So 
Um, as many of you know in the room, we're on three different ERPs, three different companies. And so a data warehouse is kind of mandatory for the way that we do business here. And so what integrations do is it allows us to pull data from these different systems um, and let them talk to each other. So we're taking data from one system, putting it into another. Um, it can also help support other um, applications that we have across campus. An example would be like housing has its own system called StarRes. And so we would bring data from our data warehouse and feed it into that system so that it can work properly, for example, having student names and information, et cetera. Um, the next is enterprise reporting. And so um, this is enterprise scope reports that are available on our business intelligence platform, which is called Leading Insight Through Empowerment, or LIGHT. Um, many of you have probably seen these reports or have accessed them yourself. Um, one key thing that um, the enterprise team is working hard on is data democratization. Um, there's actually quite a few presentations at Data Days um, over the next three days from our enterprise reporting team, and I highly encourage um, everybody to attend those sessions. Um, but one thing that they've worked really hard on is allowing stakeholders to access data themselves and develop their own reporting solutions. So one thing that I've said um, to many of our customers is, you know, while our aim is enterprise in scope, we can't possibly be expected to, um, you know, build every single report for everybody. I mean, that'd be great, but I'd need a team of a thousand people or something like that. Um, so it's really about empowering people to, to leverage data coming from the enterprise data warehouse to be able to answer their own questions and um, do targeted reporting that they need for their individual unit. Um, the team is also uh, focused on developing uh, custom reports um, and then doing knowledge sharing of best practices. Again, Data Days is a great um, uh, way to facilitate that type of knowledge sharing as one of um, the, our associate director of um, enterprise reporting is doing hands on with Tableau, for example. Um, but there's uh, a, a data community, a large data community that th uh, the uh, enterprise reporting team maintains as well to bring people together across campus who might be developing reports and sharing those best practices. And lastly, um, they uh, really promote an embedded program which brings people into the fold um, and teaches them um, you know best practices of the data that we have or reporting um, while they may you know be embedded within or you know they, they may be working for college of engineering or another unit across campus they can work closely with us get access to information develop reports that help their targeted unit but then also they can help us build enterprise scope reports. And lastly is um, enterprise, enterprise platforms and databases, which is the management of those enterprise platforms, which many of you know, like Tableau or um, Cognos, Microsoft Azure Suite, um, and a, a few other tools. Um, and then they also uh, manage the uh, enterprise databases across campus. So I really, really like this slide. So years ago, um, Georgia Tech, um, uh, had a consulting firm come in and talk about like what does data the data landscape look like here um, and so um, what it looked like before is um, you know it's the I know a guy um, diagram is what I call it um, so you might have a very basic question like how many students are enrolled here at Georgia Tech seems like that should be a pretty simple thing to answer and that there would be one answer but turns out it gets quite complicated so in the before time um, the access to centralized data was spotty um, and you really relied on uh, you know subject matter experts that were around campus so you knew somebody who may be able to access banner for example or um, a, a system that holds this information or a spreadsheet and so the issue with this is asking how many students are enrolled you might go to you can't see the laser pointer um, so you might go for example to department a and someone might say well we have 40,000 students uh, based on uh, querying banner directly. Then department B says, well, I uh, have a, a database that connects to banner and we do some manipulation on that. And I say that we have 41,000 students and so on and so forth. So what ends up happening is you have inconsistent answers to something that should have one answer or one explainable answer, um, higher risk of, of uh, you know, manual work because individual people are having to query differently in order to get to an answer. Um, and, uh, you know, there's huge risk there, especially as it relates to uh, making decisions based on data or also federal reporting. So what did we do? Based on that, um, we determined that, well, we, we really need to focus our efforts on creating a centralized enterprise data warehouse. Um, so 
uh, this started in May of 2017, and we started with student data and HR data. And so part of the importance of this is making sure that every step is documented and transparent. Um, we worked really closely with our data stewards across campus to um, build out those facts and dimensions in our data warehouses related to all of those important business processes like enrollment, uh, grades, uh, course registration, um, retention, graduation, all those like key metrics um, for student success. Um, and so with that, um, you know, we were able to deploy um, our first iterations of the Enterprise Data Warehouse in 2017, which mapped some of these key processes. From that, the next logical question was, OK, well, we have this data, it's centralized. Um, and but we weren't really at a point of success. Um, Ralph Kemble um, is kind of the godfather of um, dimensional modeling. Um, and one thing that he says in his book that I think about a lot is um, your data warehouse efforts are a failure if no one no one um, accesses it or uses it. Um, and that's something that, uh, like I said, I, I think about that a lot. So the next logical question was, all right, well, how do we get this data out to people to make decisions, to get access? And that's really kind of where leading insight through empowerment came into play. And so what we did was uh, using the technology of Tableau, we connected to our data sources um, within the enterprise data warehouse to mock out reports. And this was a grassroots effort. This was going around um, to different units and asking them, uh, you know, what do you wish that you had at your fingertips in order to answer questions? Um, and um, you've, and then also looking at our ticketing system. So what were people constantly asking tickets um, about? And so those those were the first mock reports that were in there. Um, and from that, we got huge buy-in from groups saying like, you know, this is great. This is changing the way that we're doing our business. We're no longer having to wait weeks, uh, turn around on an ad hoc request now that we uh, just have at our fingertips that refreshes daily. Um, and so um, in October of 2017, the Light Portal 1.0 was released with, uh, I don't know, maybe like five to 10 reports, something like that. So from there, Light really exploded um, and we were able to um, really think about other aspects um, that you know we weren't necessarily the best at thinking about, which was effective branding, road showing, communications, um, really spreading the word. And so from that, um, it's really spread into something um, that I think the campus relies on as part of their day to day, which is enterprise reports um, at uh, the fingertips of the, the end user. And so um, one thing that I am proud of is that light was called out as best in class uh, by the universe, uh, University System of Georgia. Um, and so um, things things have changed quite a bit over the years. So a, a lot of this is probably common knowledge, but from an ERP perspective, you know, we're on Banner Student, run one USG PeopleSoft um, and Workday Financials. We went live in 2019 with that. And looming, and uh, something that keeps me up at night anyway, is um, the ERP changes, unified ERP that is likely going to be coming down the line in the next few years, which will probably be um, you know, a decade long project. So um, that's, that's one thing. Uh, the second, from a tool perspective, what are we using internally? So from an ETL and integration standpoint, um, the three main uh, tools that we're using is IBM Data Stage, MuleSoft and Microsoft Azure, which Andrew's going to talk extensively about um, our, our Azure environment. Uh, from a reporting standpoint, uh, the three main ones are Tableau, Cognos, and Power BI, uh, Tableau being the most robust um, of the three. And then lastly, our data, house, data warehouse currently is uh, Oracle on-prem. Uh, just a brief diagram to showcase kind of what this looks like and what we're doing. So at the top, those are our core ERPs. And then the other systems, really, there's probably like hundreds of others around campus. And uh, truthfully, we don't even have all the others within the Enterprise Data Warehouse scope. Um, so I'm certainly missing some. But um, the idea is, you know, there's all these myriad systems across campus. The goal of data warehousing is to bring it in, then cleanse, sanitize, govern it, and then make it secure. From there, then we can model things into uh, you know, facts and dimensions, bridge tables, et cetera, and then feed that data down the line, whether that's an integration to another system for it to conduct business, um, to a reporting platform, um, and then uh, uh, to, to other areas of the Institute, um, which we'll talk about um, in the next couple of slides. So what isn't working? 
Um, what could be better? First and foremost is ETL. ETL is super expensive from the perspective of time, effort, um, and uh, uh, the amount of resources that it takes not only to build but to maintain. Um, IBM Data Stage uh, is a tool that is in the Gartner quadrant kind of seeing less emphasis um, with newer cloud-based technologies uh, being more at the forefront. So that's one thing is just the difficulty of the tool and maintenance. Um, integrations um, is something that could be working better, right? So from the perspective of the time and effort that it takes using the tools that we have. Um, third, uh, on-prem EDW, we're constrained uh, by having an on-prem enterprise data warehouse in our cloud. So the emerging questions that are coming from campus are, well, you know, I have a smart building that has billions and billions of records um, based on things that happen. It's simply not possible to put into an on-prem database. We don't have the space or uh, architecture to do something like that. Live data, streaming data, et cetera. Um, the strategy for staging. So again, bringing in raw tables as they exist in our source systems into the enterprise data warehouse. We have to be extremely strategic in how we do this because of size constraints and performance. So in our staging environment, we're only bringing in what we need um, to build either fax dimensions, uh, aid integrations, or reporting. So we're limited in you know, saying like our service account in one USG Connect, for example, has access to thousands of tables, but we're only bringing in about 250 into the EDW today. Um, also access and distribution of data. You know, one of the core tenants is like, be very mindful of who is accessing your on-prem enterprise data warehouse. One bad query can take it down. So we have to be very careful and strategic in how we're sharing information out. Tableau has been great for us because Tableau connects to our enterprise data warehouse, you know, periodically throughout the day to refresh things, but um, it's its own, infrastructure, you know, it's its own program that, that lives outside of our on-prem database that doesn't affect it from a performance standpoint after it ingests data. Um, so that's what can be working better. What, and what just simply isn't possible, and I kind of talked about that, is capturing and uh, handling big data. You know, for the literal smart buildings that we have on campus, we can't bring that data in um, on-prem, not possible. Um, Real-time data, we really can't do that. So, and it's not really the point of an enterprise data warehouse either. And, and uh, you know, it's it's for reporting and, and integrations. Um, it's not necessarily for um, real-time uh, data. So it's a constraint. Um, lastly, is data other than structured or semi-structured? Um, you know, there's lots of rich data across campus that might be images or PDFs or big clob fields or blob or something like that, which it's hard to um, um, do analysis on that in our, our current um, technology stack. And with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Andrew. All right, so yeah, so given Given the the that the knowledge of the the things that we knew knew that we needed to uh, work on, what wasn't working well, what was uh, wasn't possible, that gave us gave us a little bit of this impetus for a des, uh, you know a series of design qualifications. Uh, the idea here is that uh, we would uh, you know have some guiding principles around uh, you know what what we want this new uh, model to look like uh, for uh, the, the the full overhaul and modernization of our. Uh, data services um, architecture, and uh, I think first and foremost, yeah, right. That the most important one that cropped up uh, very early on is that that is that we needed a system that that had the deep integration, and and something that was cloud native uh, in in nature, right? Uh, we we didn't want to have to spend a whole lot of time piecing together different components for different uh, uh, cloud and on-prem solutions just to make something work seamlessly, and 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 that that would be very. Uh, uh, you know, uh, costly in, in, in terms of support and development and all that. So we wanted something that was, uh, you know, cloud native and, and deeply integrated. Uh, another design qualification was uh, having a centralized data distribution model, right? The, the, the vision really is to uh, bring all enterprise data from er all corners of the Institute under a one roof, if you will, right? And make that data available uh, Kind of like if, you know, I I use the the, the analogy of uh, the the Library of Congress uh, basement, right? We want to hoard data, we want to aggregate data, and make it easier to curate and 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 reshare that data downstream to external ex extended systems. Make that data available uh, easily and in a streamlined streamlined way to our uh, uh, analytics platforms. Make that data available in our uh, enterprise data warehouse, which we'll talk about in a second here again. Um, 
simplified data lineage goes along with uh, you know that the centralized data distribution model. We wanted to, you know, the, the model that we see today is is a, a ad hoc system to system integrations. Right, every time that some department on campus uh, stands up a new system, they'll they'll if they know they need data from Banner, they'll contact Banner directly and, and establish that one off uh, integration to pull data from Banner. I think the result of that is uh, you have all these source systems that have enterprise data in them that are feeding, you know, God knows how many uh, different systems directly. Uh, so it, it becomes a very decentralized and very chaotic uh, uh, model for, for distributing data on campus, which with the added, uh, with whatever the opposite of benefit is, uh, that, uh, you know, like it's it's hard for any one team to fully understand the, the the impact of of all of those those integrations that are that are taking place that are pulling data for for all these different um, dark corners of the institute for different systems. Um, so uh, we wanted to simplify the data lineage. Uh, obviously, this is going to have a very big impact. Where is uh, uh, is Zach here? No, Zach's not even here. I was going to plug right. Uh, data governance is going to be a, a big component of this for us to be able to track. Uh, the 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 lineage of where is where is what is the sort what are systems that are that, that are the uh, you know the source of 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 enterprise data what we consider enterprise data that are feeding uh, other systems and then if those systems themselves are producing additional enterprise data as a byproduct of consuming it right then they too become source systems of we want to sort of centralize and simplify and streamline. Uh, that that data lineage uh, model, so that 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 you know we we can kind of wrap our heads and our hands around that stuff. Modularity of data handling role, roles is also it was a, uh, also a big uh, design qualification for us. We wanted to be able to uh, not silo, and this is very important, right? Not silo, but to isolate and 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 uh, you know exp make you know turn those this those separate lanes for uh, the different um, uh, you, you know uh, roles that that are involved with uh, the the processing of data through this model uh, in, in a specialized way right uh, ingestion processing delivery each one of those roles and each of those lanes uh, is very specialized right there is a there's a different set of guiding principles that that will uh, go into doing each one of those roles and we wanted to specialize that and have them very well, uh, documented and separated out, at least architecturally. Not to say that we're going to have teams that don't overlap. Or, or you know, I think we're doing the opposite of that. I think we're uh, having a, a, a you know a, a, a lot of uh, cross training and overlapping uh, you know, along those areas. But we wanted to be able to really, uh, sorry, uh, be able to really uh, uh, have uh, each of those roles, each of those lanes, very well um, uh, defined. Uh, also, a refocus on data warehousing as uh, you know, a refocus on data ma master data management uh, for for the data warehouse. We don't do a whole lot of that today. I, I think you heard uh, Nick mention about the facts and dimensions and all the modeling modeling process that happens with uh, uh, the, the ETL uh, ETLing of source data into the the EDW. Uh, but what we don't do very much today of that we want to refocus our efforts on is on that 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 discipline of master data management. Right, the the idea of of um, uh, developing sort of like a uh, a strike at the mint, right? So you know we create these uh, these uh, these uh, model tables that can be replicated and and uh, and distributed out to campus as sort of like the uh, you know uh, golden uh, uh, standard for uh, you know the, uh, data and the w the way that they should have been e ETL'd and transformed, enriched in a consistent format that can be uh, used ar around campus. And that feeds straight into the last uh, uh, data point there, the uh, data marts for specialized lines of business. We want to take, we want to sort of uh, tear down a little bit that monolithic approach to the enterprise data warehouse where, you know, uh, anybody on campus that wants this table, that table, that table will create an account. You come get your data out of this, this one monolithic data warehouse. Uh, the, the idea of a data mart is to sort of uh, democratize that a little bit, right? Like those lines of business on campus that uh, where it makes sense, it's just not going to be a, uh, you know, a, a free for all, if you will, right? Not everybody gets to get their own data mart, but those lines of business that, that certainly need to process uh, enterprise data and, and create byproduct, uh, you know, create additional enterprise data as a byproduct of that. 
they're certainly on the top of our list for candidates, um, you know, uh, to, 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 to have a data mart where they can do that locally on a, on a database that, that, you know, if they make mistakes, they can, uh, it's okay, right? They, they have more access to their data than that they would in this read-only uh, sort of environment in a centralized, unified, uh, monolithic data warehouse. Um, one last thing I want to say about data marts, I guess, is that as these uh, lines of business, these departments on campus that are using enterprise data to produce by pro you know, <laughs> additional enterprise data, right? The processes that they developed uh, locally in those, those, uh, uh, in those data marts, right, can be something that can be brought back into the fold, promoted, if you will, back into the, uh, the central uh, data processing and enrichment that will feed um, back into the enterprise data warehouse that could be redistributed downstream. So it's a, you know, it's a sort of a distributed, uh, distributed uh, development uh, program, if you will, that um, will, I think, um, uh, help not only data services, but I think uh, many departments on campus, um, you know, do their work a little, um, a little more, uh, you know, uh, effectively. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we came up with. And this is our enterprise uh, data services reference model. Um, it, um, it, it shows you sort of, you know, more or less what, it, what, I, what I talked about in the previous slides uh, about having your, you know, different lanes, your ingestion lane, your processing enrichment lane, your uh, delivery lane, and they're all very specialized, right? Um, uh, all, all the way in the far left, you have your, your uh, data sources. These are systems that we have, um, 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 sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, the uh, data sources um, on the far left are the systems that we know to contain and uh, produce enterprise data. Um, uh, and, and those systems are the ones that we want to target for ingestion into the, uh, into the you know, our data, lore, uh, data lake repository. Um, we'll do that. I'm sorry, guys. Um, give me just a second, if you will. And so what, what, what I mentioned before in the previous slides was what we can't do, right? And so we're really focused on structured and semi-structured data. And so one thing that we're really trying to do is focus on those other types of data that are paramount and huge across campus. And that's that unstructured and streaming data. Again, we have smart buildings all across campus that have literally generating billions of records of data. And so with this type of model, we're able to not um, uh, worry about what the data sources look like on the back end, and we can start bringing it into those ingestion lanes. And so one thing um, that Andrew talked about previously was like, we really wanna distribute out and keep true to the different types of lanes that we have. So we have ingestion, we have processing, enrichment, and delivery. And so with ingestion, one thing that we're doing is again, um, the way that we're working our on-prem um, EDW is we're being, uh, you know, very particular on what data we're staging and bringing in due to size constraints and performance. Well, now we have um, data lake storage within Azure, which is a data lake. And so within this data lake, um, we can bring any type of source in, right? Whether it's structured, streaming, a, a video, picture, whatever, and bring it in. And we're not constrained in the same way as we were before um, within the on-prem database. And so something else that Andrew said that I, I, I want to reiterate is, you know, our service accounts that we have for the EDW in order to ingest this data, we have access to many, many times more tables and types of information. Um, and so with the data lake, because we're no longer constrained by the type of data, the source, um, or the size, um, we can bring in everything. And so like, for example, our one USG um, service account, we can bring in all thousand tables as opposed to just bringing in the targeted ones that are used for um, dimensional modeling. And so within that data lake, we're really focused again on data hoarding. If we have access to something, we want to bring it in so then we can distribute it back out in a secure and governed way. Um, Sorry about that, guys. All right, I'm back. Um, so. Thank you, Nick, for for covering there. So yeah, uh, what he said, right? We're, like the 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 area of the the in, in the ingestion lane is really going to be you know focused on on hoarding data from all corners of the institute, identifying what those source systems are that contain that enterprise data, uh, establishing those those single uh, integration points, which we're calling stage one integrations, 
and bringing all that into uh, that the source repository, which will be the one all end all be all the, the what I mentioned earlier, right? The, the 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 basement of the Library of Congress that's going to contain every bit of information that we're and we're not we're not curating data. We're bringing data across, uh, you know, all you know all relevant. Uh, the, you know, parts of, of that system, be it a database, be it a, uh, a you know, a, a vendor system that that is that's uh, accessed via API and so forth. Uh, so that's you know, and, and and that data lake that uh, Nick described is. I wish we had this working, but I don't think this is working. The uh, the, the pointer, but the second little uh, larger folder right there in the green uh, bigger box, right? It's the source repository. That's what's going. That's going to be that repository that's going to hold all this all this data. Stage one integrations again is what's feeding uh, uh, the, the one time into that hub, and then the spokes is what what happens on the other two lanes uh, on on the to the right of that. Processing enrichment, right? I think we're uh, we are moving out of that one, you know, sim, uh, the unified sort of a central uh, monolithic uh, uh, data warehouse model to a data warehousing ecosystem, right? Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're we're bringing in uh, the the leveraging the the, the, the capabilities in uh, uh, Azure Synapse uh, Analytics to bring in. Uh, you know, data laking technologies and ETL technologies and a lot of other uh, components uh, like uh, being able to, you know, consume uh, flat files from the repository in the green lane uh, uh, directly uh, as a as a database into the into the processing enrichment lane. Uh, you, you know, the, the idea here is that we will uh, sort of. Uh, move towards a model where that the enterprise data warehouse, the monolithic enterprise data warehouse that we know of today is that curio cabinet that contains only that the, the you know those those model tables the, the the it's it's the strike at the mint that I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, so that's you know the 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 ETL that's done as you know using as the as a source all those files from the uh, source repository, those flat files in a data lake. Into the data warehousing world uh, and the ecosystem is what we uh, are internally calling stage two integrations. This is things that are enriching, processing, enriching, and transforming data into a uh, you know a set of, uh, of of model data into the data, war data warehousing ecosystem. And then uh, you know once the data is on that that processing enrichment lane, we can then distribute it downstream, right? This this distributed. Uh, down to uh, extended systems, those data marts that I mentioned, mentioned earlier, and also our data, data analytics platforms, right? Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, ways to, to sort of feed that data downstream to, to extended systems uh, and data marts. And we certainly have uh, direct SQL connections to our uh, Synapse instance uh, in the yellow box. There's the system next to the master data warehouse right there. That Tableau, for instance, will be able to, uh, you know, uh, you know, build and, and and maintain data sources directly off of that. So it's it's a, uh, uh, it, it, you know, if you can see this, right? Like th that data repository does become the hub hub of data for for the campus, instead of having this sort of ad hoc approach to machine to machine uh, integrations. We want to get to a, a a state where in the future we'll be, you know, we'll if you need enterprise data, right? You all can come uh, to to that repository. You can come to us. We will feed data, uh, either uh, modeled or semi-modeled or fully modeled or unmodeled or, or raw, right, directly to the to to your source system. Um, one thing I'll note too that, and I think I mentioned that made an inference to this earlier. Some some extended systems that uh, that uh, that um, uh, uh, ingest uh, enterprise data that the consume enterprise data. Will also produce an additional enterprise data as a byproduct of that. In that case, then it makes this model right here sort of circular because not only an extended system uh, can live in the in the far uh, lane over there in the delivery, but they also can be treated as a as a data source, which will bring right back into the the uh, data lake storage, and so it becomes sort of a circular model. And that's by design, right? We want we want to to have the flexibility. Uh, such that we we can uh, end up with uh, you know a, a repository of data uh, for the institute that's as um, um, uh, broad and 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 complete as possible. Um, and I've already talked about the data analytics platforms. Where I think Power BI is our next next frontier, right? And how to like once the data is in that uh, 
the central uh, Azure repository, it should be easy to feed that data into Power BI. So I think that there is a there is an internal effort there to kind of you know build on on that knowledge a little bit more and, and make uh, make that 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 uh, that the that uh, um, uh, the cloud solution sort of end to end um, uh, and, and fully encompassing. So with that, um, I'm gonna go, we're gonna switch over to do some, did you wanna add anything to what I just said, Nick? All right, so we're gonna move to, we have uh, three uh, um, uh, use cases, case studies, and I'll let uh, Nick uh, speak to the first one and I'll, I'll talk about the next yeah. two. And so kind of in, in what, what we've been doing, right, is we, we use our, our, uh, our, our ETL tool, IBM Data Stage, to retrieve files directly from one USG to truncate and load, meaning we'll keep the metadata of the table intact, wipe the table out, and then refresh it with new data. That's what we do nightly to, to keep data refreshed. And so right now we're only pulling the necessary tables in order to do the modeling or reporting or integrations necessary. So we're talking about 250 tables ish and it takes between three and a half to four hours to refresh all of those tables from our cycle. After using Azure Data Factory, we can retrieve almost 2000 tables from one USG connect in the repository, truncate and load, full load in about 45 minutes. So this is a huge um, improvement um, and opens up a lot of additional possibilities for us from um, a data services perspective. All right, the next case study is uh, ServiceNow data. Um, as uh, ServiceNow becomes pr more prolific on campus, uh, you know we we've we've gotten a sort of an increasing number of uh, requests for hey how about like can we how can we tap in into data from ServiceNow? Uh, before there was no centrally available source uh, ServiceNow data for for external analysis, right? I, I I know of a few departments that were so hard up for doing that that they would literally manually export that data into Excel spreadsheets feed it into a uh, Tableau or some other uh, lo localized, uh, uh, you know, uh, analytics uh, solution and, and then report out of the data, which of course is not, it's not, uh, it's not efficient because it's not, uh, you know, re refreshable. It's something that has to be, it's very manual in nature. Uh, so that grow and demand kind of led us to really kind of look at uh, uh, developing a way to grab that data and bring that, that into the repository. So that, that, that really what drove us to sort of, uh, uh, early on, Target ServiceNow is one of those source systems that contain enterprise data. It's something that we want to be able to uh, take it in centrally and then distribute it downstream to uh, um, uh, departments and others on campus that want to use that data for, uh, you know, bring it in with other uh, data that for, for departmental use that they're using. Maybe they'll bring in, uh, uh, you know, uh, the data from the department in addition to a, a other enterprise data and then report on top of that. Well. Uh, so that we, you know, we we brought that into the, the uh, we used the data factory re to retrieve um, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. We're not bringing everything from ServiceNow. ServiceNow is a kind of a, a unique case in that there are like thousands of tables in ServiceNow. To bring everything in just end to end un, unchecked uh, would uh, probably cause um, um, a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, performance issues in the ServiceNow system. So in, this is one of the few cases where we're not bringing everything in from the source system, we're targeting. But we're targeting the things that are we're getting the most amount of, uh, of, of uh, demand for. So we're bringing in ITSM records, we have incidents requests and changes, uh, and HR cases. I think the HR case uh, uh, use case here was uh, for some reporting that, uh, that we were you know, working with the ASC uh, to, to help produce, and we needed to have this, those, those HR cases uh, uh, built in. So uh, we have these uh, configured, or you know, they're being refreshed three times a day. Data is available directly in Tableau by by that mechanism that I just described in the reference model earlier. Uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, I think people are starting to use that. I don't think it's really widely known that this is a, a an offering, but uh, it's going to be probably become a sort of a you know a a, a default. Um, um, uh, offering for anybody that, that that wants access to that data in in service uh, in service now as, as or, or in uh, either in Tableau or in their data marks or or on their extended systems whatever the case may be, and then finally case study number three uh, is feeding data to analytics platforms right uh, before uh, did you oh my bad yeah thank you 
before uh, the uh, enterprise data sources in Tableau were fed directly from staging and model tables in EDW uh, to publish new data sources, right? Data would need to first be retrieved from, from the source, imported, manipulated, and presented to Tableau. There were a lot of steps in the process in doing that. Now that we are uh, sort of switching up that model to have Tableau tap straight into uh, you know, these the, the data that lives in these uh, parquet file format. It's like a binary tabular format that the, the data is being saved in uh, into our uh, data lake uh, repository. Uh, it, it can be direct mounted into these virtual tables in, in Azure Synapse and boom, at, at Tableau has access to the data. We can much more quickly turn around and make that raw data from a source system available for any, any department that's looking to do reporting out of that. So those are th our three case studies that we have. Uh, I'm going to leave you with uh, a conclusion and future plans back to uh, Nick. So now we just have a few minutes and I want to leave a, a, some time for uh, questions at the end. But, you know, one thing uh, that I want to mention is, uh, you know, the close collaboration that both Andrew and I have had across our teams. Um, it's been really great doing that knowledge sharing um, and also, um, uh, you know, making sure that we're in coordination. We couldn't do uh, from a data services perspective um, what we've been able to accomplish without Andrew um, and his team's support. And so um, just continuing that partnership. And I think that lesson can be um, more broadly distributed to campus and just, you know, keep doors open, uh, talk to other folks and see how you can help each other. Um, second is documentation of standards um, and conventions. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Chaya and Prabir on the team who've uh, done extensive work um, from a documentation and standards perspective, um, which we've adopted across data services and are working through that now. And so I cannot underscore that enough. Um, you know, being prepared uh, from a documentation standards perspective um, may be one of the most important things. Um, you know, next is adopting task management. Um, we can have a whole presentation on that. Um, and, uh, you know, being in line with data governance. I wish Zach was in the room, but we're heavily invested with him um, and the One Trust tool and uh, working towards that master data management model. Um, you know, we're working towards redeveloping existing data warehousing models and integration jobs. That is TBD. I hope we can have an updated uh, presentation next year or multiple talking about that transition. It's not just about building new, but rebuilding literally everything you've built before. Um, you know, the big question is, well, what is Workday going to look like? Um, and bringing in that data, it's quite complex. Um, that could probably be its own um, conversation because um, it's quite cumbersome to do so. Um, but again, the knowledge sharing, the training, the internal knowledge, um, you, you know, just having those communications with the team has been huge and just um, um, preparing for other changes in the future being unified ERP. Um, but with that, um, you know, thanks everybody for coming. And um, here's some additional reference material on, you know, these ideas um, are not original, meaning, you know, if, you know, we, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here for um, where we've come up with these uh, methodological approaches. Um, so um, here's some additional information on how we've come up with this model and adapted it for use here at Georgia Tech. Um, so with that, um, let's do some Q&A. Yeah, Nick, um, so you mentioned several times that um, especially with like uh, certain buildings that you're getting a lot of streaming data that you really can't host on the on-prem um, solution. Um, but in that slide where you're talking about your Azure services, you you showed like Kafka and, and, and then something else for the streaming services. So are those implemented yet or is that the plan to do or, and how is that going to look in the future? You're talking about the uh, the the elements in this in this reference model, right? Yeah, and the Azure ingestion services. Yeah, and streaming data. Thank you for bringing that up, and and I I, I kind of you know fast tracked through through this, and I didn't really mention the the, the pieces on the bottom there. Uh, the, the, those are uh, we have a uh, sort of a uh, a a model for how, for how to implement that. We don't have a business case that where we have actually implemented that yet. We're actually working right now with uh, the digital learning team to explore exactly that. They have, uh, you know, Canvas Live events is, is, is sort of, I think, is being our, our, our driver for really exploring what we're doing there. The idea is, um, how do we ingest data 
that is real time data, right? Like m messaging data that can come in at any time. It's not it's not being saved on a database. It's just kind of spewing out and it's going somewhere. We want to capture that data by way of uh, uh, Azure Event Hubs and Kafka or whatever the case may be, and the ingestion service for uh, uh, you know streaming data at the bottom there. Feed that into Azure Stream Analytics, uh, which we can then build uh, real time dashboards in Power BI that will literally, and here's a use case for that, right? Like, uh, I, is Jimmy in the room? Doing the, uh, the, the folks in, uh, in uh, infrastructure and in sustainability uh, are, are the ones that, that, you know, we're working closely on, on some of this data too. They do a lot of, they have a lot of sensors in some of these new buildings, like temperature sensors and water consumption, electricity and all this stuff. All that is being generated on the fly, right? In some cases, every 30 minutes, every five minutes, wherever the case may be, we can use those inge Azure ingestion services in the bottom in green there to like capture that data, feed it into a, 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 a real-time uh, da dashboard, analytics dashboard that will give them real time, all right, the temperature in this room in the last 30 minutes have increased by five degrees. Right. So that, you know, again, we, we I think we understand the building blocks for that, but we haven't built a solution yet to uh, to address a a, uh, you know, a, a business use case uh, f for that. But um, to your larger questions, are all of those things built out? And I think depending on which icon that you see on that screen, I think to, to varying degrees. Right. I think we're focusing primarily now on, uh, you know, stage th three. It's kind of like the low hanging fruits delivering data either from the data lake storage, uh, the repository, or from the data warehousing ecosystem there and de developing pipelines that we can feed data to these extended systems, it's easier now. So we're kind of focusing on that. I think we've developed a little bit more, uh, you know, more experience with that at the time. Uh, stage two, like the, the enrichment and, and, and the data and, uh, enrichment and, and uh, and processing with more, like more, uh, you know, esoteric transformations on the data. It's something that's kind of next in our, in our um, uh, roadmap. And of course, the, you know, we've invested quite a bit already on the ingestion piece, right? And the uh, building out the repository, uh, you know, developing the, the, you know, like cookie cutter approaches to, the, to um, uh, publishing those stage one integrations. Uh, to pull data from source systems into the repository. So, you know, it, 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 it's not all one big bang, right? There, are like, we, we, each of the, each of those components are like many different parallel threads, I think, that we're, uh, we're working on and, and they're in, in, in varying uh, degrees of, I think, of, of completion or, or maturity. Hope that answered your question. So as a follow on to that, if in, if a unit on campus or a group department, whatever, on campus have a system that is collecting a lot of that data, environmental data within a research program or unit, and they are processing that data and reporting on that data and have a system that pings them when, you know, parameters fall out of somewhere, should that data or should they be connecting with you and kind of getting that to go through you as opposed to a separate Probably yes. Contract that we have for that service. I think it would probably make sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, the the our, our our goal is, I mean, it, it, you know, in, in the, depending on the kind of nature of the data, right? We may, like you heard, uh, uh, Nick use the word truncate and load. In in essence, right? Re like every time that you pull the data from the source system, we're starting fresh, right? We're we're deleting and starting over. We have some cases where I think the, the lion's share of what we're doing in a repository is for data that's that, right? We're not we're not archiving data, but when we get to that the ingestion services and doing more of that, I think we're going to want to to, to take a, a, a you know a data archival methodology here that will allow us to kind of save historical data for the data that makes sense to do so with, and I think it sounds like that may be a use case for for exactly that, right? That's that's certainly part of the part of the plan. Again, you're right. We're we're waiting for, uh, for uh, business cases to kind of crop up that will, um, uh, that that will, will serve as impetus for us to really focus on those components. Hope that answered your question. I've got one similar to that. Um, I work with Jimmy over in INS, and and obviously we make a bunch of data. Is that something where we need to be storing that data 
to then send to you guys, or is it something where you're creating the endpoint where we can just send the data directly to you? We like we the the, the Azure Ingestion Services uh, component at the bo bottom there predicts that we should have the capability to uh, establish our own endpoint, and you can just point the data to us. We'll, we'll you don't have to collect it right and send us in batches. We we can take that in uh, directly as it streams. And then just quick follow up on that. Are you guys doing anything with spatial data? That's that's my thing. You know, I've worked with you with GIS data. Do y'all have any any kind of spatial data storage, or is that still? Well, we we haven't we haven't had again this right. This is this is a new uh, business case. No, we haven't had any uh, any uh, uh, you know use case uh, for that crop up yet. Yours might be the first one, and 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 you know uh, we we certainly need to talk and 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 see about doing that. And a quick plug: if anybody is interested in mapping on campus, I'm talking on Wednesday about that. So. <laughs> All right, yep. and, and one thing I wanted to add, and what you're describing is, yeah, we, we certainly wouldn't want you to feel like, all right, I have data, now I need to store it somewhere for them to come and pick it up. We can we can directly connect. That's just an integration. That'd be way easier to do, and then you don't have to maintain infrastructure to do so. The goal of this, right, is that it'll be cheaper for the enterprise to do this. So um, we would definitely want to just connect direct and wouldn't want to put the onus on you to then have to store it, and then we pick it up from that storage location. Yeah, a perfect example of that is again. I'll refer you to the 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 work that we've been doing with uh, 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 digital uh, uh, digital learning and then Warren Goetzel's team is that we you know like they they've already done some of the work to start capturing uh, uh, Canvas data, for instance, uh, and they were doing that themselves in in AWS and all that. We've you know we've already kind of redone all that, uh, sort of trying to you know just just tear apart a little bit of, of that infrastructure. They don't want to be in the business of managing an infrastructure of, 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 of you know, of data ingestion and all that. So piece by piece, we're, you know, engaging with them to sort of redirect that over to our model and bring the data directly in. We have, you know, uh, we've learned their, their, the API model for connecting to Canvas and we're bringing the data automatically, right? So it's not like every night this data, it goes out and learns all the tables that, uh, all the 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 uh, the the endpoints, right? And in, in you know, via the API that, that that contains data, we target all of them and we bring all those in. And we're immediately, as soon as that completes, we're feeding the data into the uh, stage two um, in the data warehousing and, and the the stage the uh, the ETL one, the staging ETL uh, in the data warehousing ecosystem. That's Azure Synapse. And from there, we are uh, also, uh, uh, you know, pushing the data out to their own data mart. They have our own data mart with a copy of the data that they can now do relational, you know, SQL against and all that. So, I think we're out of time. Um, do you want to? You have a quick question? Yeah. Oh, what's the question? That's a that's a big question. I don't, I don't know if I can answer that in like a few seconds that we have here. Um, I think I'd, I I think I'd have to parse that question out a little bit. Uh, I, I would love to do a follow up on that question, though. I, it's, uh, um, uh, if you can write down who who wrote who who uh, posted that, I'd like to. How how are we doing on time? Oh, what's that? We're over by ten. Okay, so are we? I mean, guys, uh, like, uh, like, where's the, like, you know, we encourage you, I mean, you don't even have to look at this, it, those, you know, that, but, you know, you guys know who we are. If you have any additional questions, if you want to delve into any of these things, please reach out to either of us. We'd love to talk to you about your, you know, if you, if you have a business case, right, uh, ultimately we want to get all data, right? Until then, I think we're going to just focus those that are most relevant, th those that are mo in most immediate need of, uh, if there's a if there's a if there's a business case behind it, right? We'll we'll prioritize those first. So please come to us if you have uh, any questions about that. We'd love to um, um, uh, partner with you guys.